Hello, welcome back to Gordon's channel. We've come to lesson 19 of our to-do list app series. This lesson, our main purpose is to implement a feature so that we can reorder the sequence of our to-do tasks by uh, dragging. And before uh, starting the drag to reorder feature, I would like to uh, make some amendment, which is this QEC data or uh, TD data ID equals the ID. This is uh, suggested by Conrad. Thank you, Conrad. And this uh, this one is for uh, updating the the field based on the ID. And this uh, QEC data or it can accept the argument which is the CSS selector. And when we have a CSS attribute, we can use it like this. So this is the uh, uh, free schools CSS selector reference species. So here we have the attribute if it exists. And then if its attribute equals to something, we can um, go to set it with the square bracket, the attribute name, and then equals to the value. So here, this is the attribute name is uh, data ID. The type is TD, and then the attribute name is data hyphen ID, and then the value. So here, because uh, this one is the is the variable, and we need to put it as a string as the value. So, and this one is start with the double quotation. So it inside it it has a single quotation, and this one it is the double quotation. So inside it it is a single quotation. So let's uh, try to implement this, uh, suggested by Conrad. So here, let's go to our VS Code, go to the JavaScript, and here it is uh, in the Canada. So it is uh, inside the Go Model Boss Render Row. So it will select it. So it will um, update the select options. Save. So here we have get elements at listener. Update select options. Render rows. Render rows. So we want to uh, this one is when we change it when we select the same TD. So we want to go to the new one, which is the commit edit. So when we commit the edit, we want to uh, get it. Then this is the QAC letter all. So inside the commit edit, when we confirm the edit, then here we have the uh, update the table part. And here we are using the TD node list. So in the to do table, in the QE selector or a function, we are passing TD and then we look for it and check whether the dataset ID is the same as our ID. But now we don't need to do it in this way. So we, we can put this for loop. Instead of using the if here, we can put it here. So let me use the comment to compare it. So here, instead of Using this one, we can say td square bracket, and then the data. If it is data set or id in the HTML, it is data hyphen id equals to, and then the value because this one is double quotation, so I have to use single quotation. For example, a UUID here, I will need to uh, use the UUID this one, so I need to uh, here. We need to close it, then edit the plus sign. So this is one of the way. The ID is the ID variable. So this is one of the way. And if you don't use this one, we can use the uh, template literal, which is. So if you read use the template literal. So here we have the TD with the square bracket indicating the attribute selector. And for the attribute of data hyphen ID, I want to have some uh, string as the value and the string 
inside it it is ID here so this is the template iterate way and because we are selecting only the uh the elements with the TE with this data ID so we don't need to check this if here so we need to check this closing bracket I want pairing this one we use the here we can in the VS code we can go to the left side of the if to close it so this one pair with the if so let me close it now we are uh, disabling the if because it is for sure to be of the data set ID close to ID so let's save it and try it so if we make some changes for example uh, this one if we change it uh, for example if we change this one so if we change it to for example category 10 save it then we can see that this one is updated we change its date also for example from 23 to 22 then this is updated because uh, here we are doing by uh, using this QE selector then we are doing the same thing as checking this data set ID so thank you again Conrad thank you and let's start our today's uh, purpose which is to implement a drag to reorder feature and after so we need to do two parts the first part is the table the rows are draggable and the second part is uh, this uh, I will need to update the array too so uh, I have created a uh, sample of what is the final achievement so here we have four rows, one, two, three, four. I have four rows. And for these four rows, I have a array corresponding to first four, these four rows, A, B, C, D. So if I, for example, uh, drag the fourth row up before the second row, then it will uh, be inserted before the second row. And inside the, so it will be inserted inside this row with the, uh, the second row. And then here we can see the sequence of the, uh, every the fourth one the d becomes uh before the b so this is what we will want to uh, achieve in this lesson but not on this table but on our table of course so let's do it step by step so first of all we will need the drag start event listener drop event listener so let's try it So here, if we go to uh, add the event listener, now we want to add the event listener on the to the table, for example. So here we want to add it on the table. And let's call the function on drag start. Let's use the popping of course. So for example, uh, my defend listener is adding on. Okay, I immediately have a error. Let me try to turn on the console. Error. On drag start is not defined, so I need to Go to define this function on desktop. So let me define it. Desktop. So I will have an event, the parameter. I will want to lock the event target. Lock dot target let's try it now if I check on it you see that there is it is not tricking at all because we don't have a draggable element so inside a render row inside a render row and we create a TR element we should uh, add a draggable TR element 
to be Jacobo. Let's try it. Now, if we go to uh, check, inspect it with the VS Code, you can see that on all the TL elements, we have Jacobo equals true now. So if we try to uh, drag it, check the console, if we try to drag it, we will see TL Jackable true. So uh, it is very interesting here. So you see, we are uh, in the add event listener, we are adding the list, uh, event listener on the table. Okay. But then when we console log the event target, we see that the event target, the console log tells us that the event target is the DR element, the row. So this is the event target, not where we are adding the event listener on, but instead it is the draggable element. Okay, so this is that the TR elements. And here, after we know that this is the TR element, we want to implement the second uh, event listener, which is the drop event listener. So let's go to uh, implement this too. For example, we are also uh, adding on the to do table. Uh, here it is not, let's start, it is on job. Let's go to define the on job. job. So I will want to console log the uh, event listener too. Don't need to console log the tracking. So I just need to console log the drop now. Try it. I try to drop now. There is uh, no no such uh, response. The drop is not triggered, and the reason that drop is not triggered is because there is one more event called uh, drag over, and the drag over has a default action. So the default action is preventing the drop to fire. So we will need to add one more event listener called drag over. Oh, we say to do table dot add event listener. Drag over. The uh, uh callback. Let's call it drag over coupling force now we want to define this drag over so function on drag over event so let's console out the event the target of the drag over so let's go to here and Try to, uh, for example, I take this one and I drag over it. You see, it said that the drag over is the TD, TD the cell. So it keeps telling, it keeps telling me that I'm over this step. So this is the vendor drag over. But now I want to prevent this from uh, having default uh, action. So let me use prevent default function. Event dot prevent default. After saving this, if I click on it, we can see that. Let me see. let me stop consoling it now. Console log here. Take drop. If I click it. Move it. Oh, it's not defined. So here I I should use console dot log. So dot log. The log is not defined in five two, so it is already inside the on job. So now if I say click on this, uh, drag it over here, you see it said that the drop is triggered and the drop target is the TD. This one, TD is our drop target. So here, this is uh, the drag start, the drag over and the drop. So for uh, creating a drag and drop, first of all, we need to have the drag start event and then we need to have the drop event and we need to have the drag over event. And inside the drag over event, we need to have the event dot prevent default. Otherwise, this drop will never be triggered. 
here I want to uh, implement this step by step so the first one is when I drag, drag it over it will uh, 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 switch the rows so let me go to it so here I will need to uh, if the vendor target uh, dot matches so if it is a TD then I will want to uh, apply this on the TR so let me create let a variable first let the uh, target at the insert target before target this uh, let it first if let it be the event dot target first default it as the event dot target the before target default it as the event dot target and but if the event target is a td then the before target should be the tr so if before the target will equals to event dot target dot parent node So here I don't need to control the vendor target anymore. That I want to uh, check whether I'm here. I if only have one line, so I am not using curly bracket. So here I instead of console in the vendor target, I want to console the four target. Let's try it now. If I go to uh, for example, drag this row over here, I see the event target of or uh, the before target is now the tr element with the draggable tool so now the target will be the row i want to put this above this so here let me uh, first of all let me create some facial effect so if i am dragging over it insert it here i want this one to go down slightly so it to become pixelized and to make it go down slightly you can add a padding top to the row so the uh, before target should have padding top dot style dot padding top close to uh let's say uh one should uh, one size so let's try it if I have this one dot over it so it's not having any doubts. Uh, have ten px. Not working. If how about if it is margin top? If it is margin top, I drag over it. Oh, there's nothing. There is no change. So, uh, let's just leave it then. Just auto this. And here, if we are trying to insert something before this one, we need to uh, put this here. So we will use the insert before. So the table you have insert before. The insert before is you have the new child and the reference child the new child is uh, what they are dragging and the reference child is the in before target the reference child is the before target but then what we are dragging we need to store it somewhere so uh, some tutorial may tell us to uh, store it inside a uh, for example if you also lot the event here so lot the event here we start checking something so if we start checking something it will have a drag event and in the drag event there is a data transfer so uh, we can use the data transfer the say some tutorial is teaching us which is belongs to the drag event but we can also do it in a simpler way so we can also uh, let's just create an uh, variable here so we will create a one more variable here which is the dragging target dragging target which is the 
讲到 dragon type、dragon element、dragon element。So for the dragon element, it will store the element which we are dragging, which is a row element. So here, when we go to our uh, uh, on drop, once we has a drag start, we will update the uh, dragon element. So dragon element will be event dot target equals to event dot target. Yes. So the event target will be some tl. That of the td. The table it will be the tl, and here for the on job event, for the on job event, the target is usually the td. So we need to、uh, check if it is a td, and we will、uh, update it as the parent node. But we don't、uh, assign it as the parent node directly because sometimes it may not hit the td, and it will the event target is the tl. So the parent node will be the table. So we don't do the parent node directly. We need to.、Uh, To say matches to check the type, and here we will have the before target, and we will need to use the insert before. So for the insert before, the new node is the dragging element, and the reference node is the before target. So this is what the insert before, the use of the insert before. But now we will fail here because there is one problem yet. We have not solved yet. For example, I'm dragging this one to do six. I try to drag it before to do four four. Ah,、uh, it already worked. Okay. Wait.、Right, anyway. Okay. This is sometimes ah、uh, it will not work because the ah、uh, this element already is a child of another element. But this time because this one is the same child of the table, so it is not the table is not ah、uh, keeping it. So it is giving it away to itself. So we can use the insert before because they have the same parents. So I can keep dragging the sequence now, see, and don't need to console log the before target now. So the before target. So here we are、uh, switching the. A sequence of the table. So we have used the drag start event, the drop event, and the drag over event. And the next thing we want to do is、uh, making our array in sync with what we see in the table. So when our user, we allow them to drag it to reorder it in the table. Ah,、uh, now we see a problem. We said and cause DOM exception fail to execute insert before on node. The node. Before which the new node is to be inserted is not a child of this node, so this is the table element dot on job. So now this one it is the job target is becomes the table. So let me uh show the target again and show why this is happening. So console log the event dot target, and this one the target becomes the table. So here if we an RG study and we try to drag it over and put it into for example. Ah,、uh, this row. You see, the ta the target becomes the table, and it is telling us that we cannot find the parent of the table. That's the so we need to check also if the target is the table, and we don't let it happen. If the event dot target matches table, if it matches table. Then we just return. We don't execute anything below. So if we drag it to somewhere between the borders, then the target will be table. Nothing will happen. And let's、uh, also debug it in case that when we drag it, it is before the first one. Yeah, the insert before. If we drag it, try to put it before. It is not okay too because. Ah,、uh, let me see. Table element dot on job yeah. The target is the to do td. So here when I try to、uh, drag it over and put it here, it is also getting the error. So we need to check this too. So we need to check if the target is table. Then we will skip the execution. If it is td, 
if the event target is a TD, fail to execute. So here we are. The problem is that we have, for example, and I drag it over this one, this button, then we have a problem because this is the target is a span and parent is the TD. So because we have this structure, so we have the PR, then a TD. But sometimes inside the TD we have another span. So we need to avoid this problem too. If a target is spent, then the parent node is TD and it is still not a TR. So we need to, instead of using the if else, instead of using the if else, we should use the while. The while, the event.target matches out. While it is TR, then we don't need to do anything. So while it is not the TR, then we need to do this. The before target will be the event dot target dot parent node, and this is this shouldn't be event dot target. This should be the before target. So here, the uh, logic. Let me go through it again. The first thing we do is, uh, if the event target is table, then we don't do anything. But then we assume that the event target we store it in before target. We check the uh, type of the before target. If it is a row, then we don't do anything. We just go to the next row. But then if it is not a row, it may be the TD or the span. So we will try to uh, update the before target by the before target parent. Before target parent. So for the TD, it will be the row. And it is the row, it escapes this while loop. But if it is span, then this parent element, parent node will return the TD. So the before target will be updated as a PD. And it will in the connection because it is still not the TR, so it is still inside the while loop. So it will go look over one level again. So the parent node of the TD will be the TR. So now it becomes the TR and it escapes this uh, while loop. So this is uh, using the while loop instead of it. So let's try to debug it slightly again. So if now I try to uh, move it up, I save it. Yeah, I need to. If we see the dot, it means that we have not saved it. So after saving it, if I put it, for example, above the delete button, then it can also recognize that it should be inserted before this row. For example, the to do five, I put it before to do four four. If I put it on on the above the button, you see, uh, the target is the span. But I can also because it find the parent of the span, the TD, and then the parent of the TD, the row. So it is inserted before the row. And next, let us test what happened when we put it before the first row. So if we try to put it before the first row, there will be an error. It says that the element, the target is the time. TD. So let's try to uh, check it. So here, if the, the vendor target is the D, and let's console out the before target. After the while loop, for target, try to see what is happening. If I console it, if I drag it to above the first row, then it says that the target is the TD, and then the before before one is the TR. So it is uh, the insert before before target is the TR. It says that fail to execute the insert before or not. The node before which the new node is to be inserted is not a child of this node. The node before which the new node is to be inserted is not a child of this node. So we cannot put it before. Uh, if this one is the first row, we don't have anything to put it before. So let's do one more checking here. If the before target matches, if it matches, here we can put some CSS selectors in matches. So, for example, uh, even the shield selector, I think. So, if it is the nth child one, if it is the first, or uh, we can say not nth child one, we can say first child. If it is the first child, then turn. So we don't do anything. So let's try it. Now, if we try to drag this one to the first row, then it will 
nothing will happen because the target is to do the before before target is the TL but then because it hits this matches so the, the pseudo CLSS letter first child match this TL because this TL is the first child of this table so when it matches it then uh, we will return we will escape it so let's let's remove the console log and add some uh, comments this one is this one is untitled so this one is to prevent the uh, target prevent when target is table So here and then we will have the before target this one this block is to uh look who the parent view is tl here this one is to be demanded here this one the looking matching the first child is prevent when the uh, PL is the first row. Lastly, if all this passes, then we will do this one, which is the insertion, which is the visual, visual, uh, visualized the drag drop. So this is the first part of our on drop. So this part is basically uh, handling the so drag and drop your table. Drag and drop of table. The rows. And the next thing we will do is to update our array. So here you see if we change the sequence, then the array is changed accordingly. So one, four, two, three. So the array becomes one AD. DC. So to implement this, we need to know which uh, array method to use. And if we want to take something out, it is splice. And if we want to insert something, it is also splice. So let's try to take a look at what splice is doing. Uh, because this block is quite long, so let me put it inside another function. So no, oh, let me just put it here. But let me use a different block. Let me call it. Let me call it. So handling the tag, handling the array. So this part is for handling the array. So we will need to have uh, the space. So first of all, let's just know what space is doing. For example, we have an array. Let's test it before the execution. Test it here. Yeah, we will use the console to see our result. So first, if we have an array, for example, this is apple, uh, Anna. So if we have apple banana peer now the first thing we will want to do is for example uh, array dot splice for example we want to take uh, everything after banana peer we want to keep the apple only so we can say starting from the first element we take something everything out so if we console lock the uh, array now it becomes apple only the apple is left because when we use splice on the array, then uh, it will, if the one one argument one it will take everything starting from the first index, so it will take these two out. So the array only the apple remain. But these two after taking out, it is stored in, it is returned. So we can use a returned to store it. So if we console log the returned, we can see that. Another pair and pair is stored in the variable returned. 
But now if we say we use a second argument, which is the number of uh, items. Now if we say one one, then it will start from the first index of one. It take only one element out. So let's try it. Now we can see that only the banana is taken out because it is starting from the first element and uh, take one element out. So this is taking only the banana out. And the apple and pear is kept an array. Banana is uh, inside returned. So now if we want to replace it, for example, we want to replace it with a uh, grape. So this will replace banana with grape because the index is one and take out one element. So if we take out banana, insert grape there. So if we take two elements out and insert grape, it is also okay. We can take banana and pair out and insert grape first index. But if we say we take one element out and then we insert two elements, for example, grape and uh, what else food do we have? For example, um, pineapple. For example, pineapple. Then we can see apple, grape, pineapple, pear, and banana. Why grape? Why pineapple is beside grape? Because we are taking something out from the first index and then we are inserting two new items at the second out index, the first index. So this is the insertion with slice. So we have popping out and insertion. And let's I think this is uh, so now this is enough knowledge for implementing uh, popping and inserting. And now we need to decide our logic. So shall we uh, take out and put it inside at the same time as the replace? So we need to think over how we are going to uh, know which element in the array to use. Because you see, when you use splice, when we use splice, we need to use the index. The first uh, argument is the index of the element inside the array. So first of all, we need to find out the index. And the second one, the number is one. And the insertion it can be done. Uh, but it is not the replacement at that location. For example, if I am taking one, two, three, four, five, six, if I am taking the fifth one out and insert it before the two, then it is not replacing this one with the new element or replacing this one with the new element. It is inserting something here. And if we want to insert something but not replacing, what do we do? So we say insert with take out zero element. So in the index of first, before the first element, we take out zero element, but we insert two elements. So let's try it. So now we can see that it is apple, grape, pineapple, banana, pear. Why? Because the splice is taking out zero element, and it is doing insertion at the before the index one. So before banana, it will insert two grape and pineapple. So this is insertion without taking anything out. So we will need to use the insertion. Also the popping, and whether we need to use the popping first or the insertion first, uh, now we need to think of the logic again. So, for example, if I have, uh, let me use, let's use this one as a example. So now I, let me have, put this here. So now we have an array with five elements. We have an array with apple, banana, pear, a grape, pineapple. Let me use, not use pineapple, let me use watermelon. Watermelon. Let me put the grape before the pear. It will be alphabetically easier. Yeah, so this is more intuitive now. We have apple, banana, grape, pear, and watermelon. A, B, P, B, P, W. And now I want to. Uh, Take something out, take something out, and put something it in an other uh, index. So here, if I say, if I take it out, for example, I need to take the pear out and insert it before the banana. So if I take the one with the index three out, one element out, and then uh, this one is taking it out. 
And then I want to insert it before the banana size. Uh, banana is one. We'll insert, take nothing out, set the return. So now, then I console out the array again. So now, for this one, I take the peer out, then I put it inside the banana. But now you see that if what it has put inside is an array because the peer is an array. Because what we take out when we take something out, this one is not the element, this one is the array. So instead of using ret return, we should use return to zero. The first one inside this array. So it will become apple, pear, banana, grape. So we are taking the pear before the banana. But this is only happens when the pear is before banana. But now if the pear is after banana, then this one index will be moved. So it will not success. So instead of doing this way, we instead instead of doing this first or doing this first, we need to loop it twice. We need to uh take the things out first and store it in a temporary variable. And then look over the index again and then insertion. So let's try to do it. So the first phase is to find the indexes of the one to take out, to be taken out. And then I will need to uh, pop the array, pop the element. And then the, the first, first thing to do is find the index of the one to be uh, set up before. Then I will uh, insert the element. Set the temporary So let's do these four phases. The first one is I want to find the index of uh, my, my target. So here. I will loop over the to-do list array. So let me use the, for example, I can use simple for loop. Oh, let me use the, let me use the, for each loop, to-do list, but for each, I will have the object, the index, so I will use arrow function here. For the uh, parameters, we have the object, the to do object. We will have an index, the array itself, but don't need the array itself. So here, uh, for the to do, I will check whether the to do object has the same ID as our. Uh, the the one the dragging element. So we need to pop this out from the array. So for the dragging element, let's check the drag it. And in the tr, now you can see that in the tr we don't have the ID. So we need to have the ID to identify it from the array. So here, if you want to have the ID, we need to go to a render row again. Render row here. Go. So for this one. I to add the uh, data set to data set dot if I add it here then it will be if I now if I just say data set ID then because at the beginning of this lesson we have say for all the uh, TD with this ID and it is okay too because this is the TD TD so we will not find the TR so let's Let's just use the tr element dot data set ID equals to this one the ID is structured from the uh, argument. So now if we save it and go to back it, now inside the tr we have the data set of the ID data ID attribute. So for all the tr we have the data ID attribute. So we can use this. Yeah. Then let's close the render row. Go back to the on job.
let's go back to the on job here we have the to do object and the index for the to do object if to do object ID equals to the uh, one the uh, trackable tracking element which is the row the uh, data set dot ID. If this happens, then we will need to update our index. So I will say that a temporary index inside this box. Let's let that a temporary index which is the uh, temp index. Okay, let the temp index, temp index will be equals to the index of this equation. Here, this is getting the index of the dragging element. And now I need to pop the element. So I will go to to do list. Then I will use the space. So I will say the index is the time index. I will take one element out, not replacing anything inside. And after popping this uh, to do object out, I need to store it. So uh, I need to store it, which is an array. So this one will pop it and store it in an array. But I can also use the array destruction here. So let me um, let me use console log here to demonstrate. Maybe now if I try to uh, check something, then you can see that I have an array which is the uh, object which I am trying to move it away. Here, here, uh, you can see that this becomes an uh, Array, but we can also do it with the object array destruction here. So we don't need to use the zero. So we can say destructure it and it becomes the uh, to insert object. So let's console out the to insert object. So now if we drag this over, you see the to insert object is the one. With the category four, so this one is our to insert object to do six, to do six, and if we drag this one, we can see that the to insert, we drag something else, you can see that the to insert is the to do forty four. So this is because we have do the array destruction here. So after popping this out, we need to. Now the to do list is the length of the to do list is short term. So let's try this. So now before we do this, let's check it. So to do list a length before this after this then. So now if I try to uh now it has six one. If I try to drag it, it will drop to five. If I try it again, it drops again. So now that's why we need to loop over the to-do list to get the new index of the inserted before object. So here I will basically do something similar to the previous one. But now I will have the to-do list for each uh, to-do object index. Then I will check if the to-do object equals to the ID equals to. This time it is this before target, which is another TR. So before target, so before target data 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 ID, and then I will update the temp index as index. Why I can offer it because I've used it already, so I don't need to keep the value. So I can offer it here. After getting the type index, I need to do the use the splice to insert it. So I will use the to do list dot splice. And now where do I insert it? Which is the temp index, and uh, I need to splice it. So the temp index, I need to insert it. So I will take nothing out, but instead I will uh, put 
something inside, which is the to insert object. Copy and paste. See? Paste. So the to insert object will be inserted here. So let's try it. So if I, uh, let's console out the to do. To list. So let's console out it before and after to see the difference. So now uh, the sequence is like this. We have, for example, I have to do 44 and then to do 6. If I drag to do 6 before to do 44, so before we drag it, the uh, fourth one is to do 6. Uh, this one is to do. Yeah, we have to do 5 here. To do six here, but now if I drag it, oh, drag this. If I drag this. Now if I check it, now we have to do five here and to do forty four here. If I try to drag this to do six over to do twelve, For example, I drag to do six over to do twelve. This update before. Controller to do list. Controller to do list. So for the last one, for the result, the to do list, to do six becomes the second one. The to do, to do 44 is here. So the to do, uh, to do list is updated already based on our sequence. So let's not control it here. So after uh, doing this, we need to uh, update our storage. So let's update our storage by calling the save function, which is the function we have defined. Save. So let's try it again. So now, for example, if I have a category two, for example, if I have uh, to do two, to do three, to do forty-four, if I move to do five before. I move to do six before and my move to do two now done. So now I have five, twelve, six, three, two, forty-four. If I refresh, then the storage tell me the memory remembers that it is five, twelve, six, three, two, forty-four. So they remember the sequence based on uh, my rearrangement. So this is how to uh remind the drag to reorder feature. So we need to use the press start event, drop event, drag over event, and we need to use Space to pop the element, and we need to use space to insert the element. And remember, when we use space, and when we so there are two key points in this lesson. The first one is the drop element will not be fired until you have the drag over element. You have used the prevent default on the event. The second key point is when you use the space to pop and the insert, we need to know the index, but the after the popping, the array becomes shorter, or vice versa. If you do the insert first, and then the uh, array will become longer. And, and then you use the old index to find pop it, then it's not possible. So you must find the index, find the pop index first, find the pop index first, pop the element, and then find the update index for the insert before, then insert the element, and update the storage. So the sequence must be this way. I hope I've explained it clearly. And if not, please let me know. Please leave a comment and let me know. And if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can know when it, uh, lesson 20 is released. So, lesson 20, I will try to uh, do the drag to reorder on the this one on the Book Canada. And then for the lesson 21, I will implement a pagination which is suggested by a uh, YouTube viewer. So, uh, look for, let's look forward to my lesson 20 and 21st. So, thank you. Bye bye.